Hey guys, welcome back! So, I'm having a blast, tons of fun with my A500 Mini and um, I'm gonna bring some uh, recommendations that you guys left in the comments section of my previous video and I'm also gonna try a soft mod by Team Pandori, so stick around! Let's start by booting up the Mini with the original firmware. At this point, everything is untouched except for all the games that in the meantime I ended up adding. I'm also giving the bundled controller a second chance, so let's try right away a couple of random Amiga games like for instance Chase HQ2 Special Criminal Investigation that came out not only for the Amiga but also for the more popular home computers in early 90s like the C64, the ZX Spectrum and the Atari ST. The Master System and the PC Engine also got a version of their own. Even the Sega Genesis and the Japanese Mega Drive got their own game. I recall playing this one on my ZX Spectrum 128K plus 2A and it was one of the many 128K only games produced by Ocean Software. Curiously, never played it on the Amiga, so it's my first time and I'm seeing some visual glitches. Again, the emulation isn't perfect in this one also using the original firmware. Rodland is among the most perfect conversions from an arcade original to the Amiga that also landed in early 90s to practically all other 8 and 16-bit home computers available. Sadly, the NES and Game Boy versions were exclusive to Japan, so many old-school console players out there never had the chance to try one of the most fun and addictive puzzle platformers from that era. At least that's how I see it! A perfect game to play with family and friends. I'm witnessing some minor graphical glitches, but even so, it's yet another amazing game to look out for when building your own A500 mini list of games to have and to play. Tell me down in the comments section if you've played this jam. So much fun and incredibly addictive. I could be here all day long. Now as for recommendations of games to try, let's start with Midnight Resistance that was requested by Will Robinson, so thank you Will! Play the turn this game at the arcades and on my ZX Spectrum 128K plus 2A. The Amiga version was another of my guilty pleasures back then and I told all the story and historical background on Midnight Resistance in a recent video. If you haven't watched it, Please do it! I'm gonna leave the link on the top right of the screen and in the description of this video. Visually it's just a tad dark, but it has always been like this. I needed to adjust my monitor brightness so that I could play this game during the day. And something that I couldn't understand is why the heck the sound effects couldn't be heard simultaneously alongside the soundtrack. We pressed the S key to change between sound effects and music. We couldn't have both. That's incomprehensible in a machine that was always labeled as a multimedia powerhouse. Even so, it plays well, practically without any graphical or sound issues worth mentioning. Another of Will's recommendations was the awesome Pank that I consider the best Amiga conversion from an arcade original. And I must convince you all that this is a must have on all your A500 minis. Besides being one of the best games ever made, it plays awesomely great on the system. Hey, even the ZX Spectrum version was incredible. <laughs> but again, Pank must be on the top of your list of games to add to the A500 mini. It should have been bundled with the system in the first place. This is just a bit of footage from the hours I spent playing it. Just like Rodland, Pang is one of those incredibly addictive games that we can play for hours in a row without even noticing it. And it was yet another incredible achievement by Ocean France. Those guys were masters in arcade conversions for the Amiga.
Now let's try something different. Let's put Pandori mod to the test. So kudos to team Pandori for putting this together. But first we need to switch the system to 60Hz so that the mod runs flawlessly. Now we're in business. The music playing in the background is obviously from Lotus 2, courtesy of Barry Leach. The mod uses RetroArch to allow us to play all the Amiga games we'll ever need, but other systems as well. I'm gonna leave the links to Team Pandori's video and channel so that you guys can keep up with all the many alternatives and solutions to get your A500 Mini running things like Doom for example, yeah, it plays Doom and even Quake. In the meantime, it seems that Retro Games, the guys behind the A500 Mini, just released a new firmware version that blocks soft mods like this one. So if you wanna delve into this side of the Mini and have a sort of emulation station that can run things like Doom and Quake, simply don't update the firmware of your Mini, at least for now. And now for a comparison. Let's fire up Batman the movie within the Pandora mod first. As you can see, my TV automatically adjusts the game window to fit the screen keeping the aspect ratio and it doesn't have image glitches or anything like that. Only the sound is a bit muffled, but that's how I recall playing it back in the day. And I have to apologize to keep always bringing Batman the movie to the table, but I absolutely love this game, it plays beautifully with this mod. Now let's switch to normal or factory mode, without Pandora soft mod. Firstly, the game window doesn't automatically fit the screen of my TV display, secondly, there are some graphical artifacts while the camera is moving, only the sound is crisper but you'll be the judge. Another comparison. This time around let's compare Lionheart that was requested by viewers Symbolic and Roman. First, let's check if it runs using the unmodded A500 Mini, meaning with all original factory settings and firmware. The intro looks and sounds great, but when we start playing, Things immediately get a 180 degree sharp turn. As you can see, graphical glitches all over the place, mainly in the water, and even the sound is completely messed up. Now let's try Lionheart once again by running it through Pandora mod. The result is astonishing. See and hear for yourself. What a masterpiece and exclusive to the Amiga, so another one that must be in your list of must-have games on the A500 Mini, but using this mod obviously. And while we're at it, let's try and run Jim Power. It has tons of issues running on the factory unmodded Mini, so let's find out if the Pandora mod can handle it. Nah. Sadly, it also has issues, but it plays better though, a huge improvement from where I'm standing. So getting back to viewers recommendations, Will Robinson also requested that I should try Battle Squadron, so let's do it. And let's just enjoy this intro tune, it's incredible. And look at it running. No issues with this one also. Battle Squadron was an Amiga exclusive on home computers, if I'm not mistaken. It was later ported to the Sega Genesis and the Mega Drive and is the spiritual successor of Hybris. Remember that one? So and talking about Hybris, it was recommended by another viewer. So thank you so much Mr. Guru. And yeah, another one that runs flawlessly through Pandora mod. 
And Hybris is yet another Amiga exclusive that I already brought to the channel in one of my Amiga exclusive game series of videos. It was released back in late 80s by Copcom and being an Amiga exclusive means that you can't play it anywhere else. Now for a couple of recommendations by Szabolcz Kzengoy. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. He requested that I try two games from the Strike series, Desert and Jungle. So let's start by Desert Strike. Yep, runs flawlessly. And as for Jungle Strike. The same. He also asked to try some CRT effects, but I totally forgot, uh, I'm sorry about that. You know, I left CRT effects behind my back decades ago, <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. As I've said so many times before, I prefer pixel perfect graphics and I avoid applying image filters of any kind whenever possible. Thanks for the recommendations though. Back to Will Robinson, <laughs> he requested that I try the original Lotus Turbo Challenge, so let's do that! Let's start by choosing a track and off we go! And what do you know? It runs without any issue whatsoever, the only issue is the gamer that struggles to play these games with the bundled gamepad. What a pain! So let's advance to another recommendation from Will. Yeah, <laughs> this time around is Moonstone, a hard day's night. A game that passed under the radar of so many gamers back in the day, despite also being available for DOS based computers during the early 90s. Blood and guts everywhere. <laughs> I'm sensing it just a bit too fast for my own reflexes. Yeah. It's really sad getting older. <laughs> this is way difficult than Elden Ring. Let's move on then. And now for a recommendation coming from Luis G. It's no more nor less than the mighty Mr. Dangerous, also known as Rick. <laughs> this is such an unforgiving game. Obviously that while exploring the wilderness, booby traps won't give us a heads up when they're triggered and we would die countless times due to spikes that pop out of walls and floor, darts are spit from statues, etc, etc. Needless to say that it runs like a dream on the A500 Mini through Pandora mod, right? And back to Will Robinson's recommendations, it's time to try our type. This intro tune is so iconic. And also iconic is the gameplay, but played by someone that is still good at it. I struggled against my badly timed movement and positioning, but it was worthless. This is the proof that some memories must stay in the past. Back in the day I used to beat this game at the arcades, on my ZX Spectrum and on the Amiga. Nowadays I suck at it big time. I'm really disappointed with myself. Despite all the whining, <laughs> R-Type runs and sounds great on the A500 Mini. Back to Mr. Guru, he requested that I tried Robocop on the Amiga. I'm not much of a fan of the Amiga version of Robocop. The arcade original and the ZX Spectrum port were my go-to Robocop video game versions. The Amiga version had quite a harsh development process. Check out my history video with all the background work that led to the development of this game. It was probably the most important game for Ocean Software that catapulted the company to stardom. The ZX Spectrum version for starters stayed in the top of British charts for a year and a half. And yeah, it plays well on the Mini. Now for a couple of recommendations from viewer classic 80s stuff. Street Rod 1 and 2. I'm gonna be honest, never played these games or the series. And I simply don't know what I'm doing, so bear with me. From what I could understand, we start by buying a car with the few hundred dollars we have in the bank, tune it in the garage and go flat out in drag races trying to win respect and be the king of the city. Something like that. 
both games have identical goals, with the second one having more cars and parts to buy. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Again, needless to say that both play great on the A500 Mini. And back to Will Robinson, he requested Tuki. Yeah, I can see that he's a huge fan of Ocean Software. <laughs> Just like me, in fact. And Tuki is another game that I already covered here on the channel. And just like Pank, was a masterful conversion from Ocean's French studio from the arcade original by Ted Corporation. Don't forget to check the complete history of Tuki here on the channel. And it plays just like I remembered playing it on my A500 back in the day. But this time around, it's a ton better. Can you see why? Back in the day the game would run in a tiny window, but through Pandora mod it runs full screen, showing all its glory. Isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love it. We're going back and forth in the recommendations from viewers, so going back to Mr. Guru, he requested Super Angon. Now, that's a proper racer, <laughs> just how I like it. And again, it doesn't disappoint. It runs incredibly smooth as silk and it's one of those throwbacks that just brings tons of memories of playing it at the arcades on that incredible sit-down version of the cabinet by Sega and the master Yu Suzuki. I honestly prefer Enduro Racer, but that one never had a port to the Amiga. As for Super Angon, it can't get any better when looking out for motorcycle games on the Amiga. It's simply the best out there. And to conclude the recommendations from viewers, Will Robinson asked me to try the iconic Turrican series that is basically one of the greatest audiovisual packages the Amiga had ever seen. All three games run flawlessly on the Mini and you can check my history videos on Turrican 2 The Final Fight and Turrican 3. The links will be in the description below. All three games run incredibly well on the Mini through Pandora mod, so and as you've witnessed throughout this whole video, I hugely recommend that you go and grab yourselves a copy of this amazing mod and paste it onto your USB stick alongside all your favorite games, not only for the Amiga, but for all your favorite 8 and 16-bit systems from the past. But keep in mind that it also supports and runs amazingly well PlayStation 1 games for instance. And while we're at it, let's throw a few arcade games into the mix. So here's Final Fight running on the Mini. <laughs> what a game, my favorite side-scrolling beat'em up ever made. And please don't forget to check also my top 16 classic beat'em up games across all platforms. Another of my addictions during the golden era of the arcades was Snow Brothers that was supposed to have an Amiga version by Ocean France in around 1991. That version was never officially released by Ocean and only in 2006 a ROM image for the Amiga was leaked online. And it's awesome! I'm really enjoying this, so let's try a Super Nintendo game! And if you follow my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Indiana Jones, so Greatest Adventures is another incredible piece of programming by Factor 5, the guys behind the Turrican series and later some well-known Star Wars games. What's amazing in this one is that we play through the most iconic set pieces from all the first three movies. It's so much fun and a very good game indeed, that back in mid-90s could only be played on the Super Nintendo and that system wasn't very popular here in Portugal. Let's jump to the Master System and to its incredible version of Sonic. So many hours playing it back in the day over at my cousin's house. And for me it's simply one of the best Sonic games from the whole series. And again, plays great on the A500 Mini.
To conclude, let's keep listening to Yuzo Koshiro's music, but now on the Mega Drive slash Genesis with the iconic Streets of Rage, the first one that I discovered back in the day through the Mega Games 2 compilation cart that also included Golden Axe and The Revenge of Shinobi. The A500 Mini is a pretty awesome emulation station and I'm truly enjoying it. And that's the most important thing, to have fun, and I'm having a blast with it! If you've enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel monetarily through Patreon at patreon.com slash it's a pixel thing or using the thanks button below. To keep up with what's going on with the channel, check all my social media stuff by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and... I'll catch you all in my next video! Cheers!